Oh, I was on mute. Damn. <laughs> I was on mute. Should probably do that again. But then I have to edit that out. Oh, so annoying. I literally I was like looking at it like, oh, look at that little mute button. Look at that little mute button down there. Oh, let's do it again. Right. Three, two, one. Strikers galore linked with Arsenal. Meanwhile, Thomas Partey and Alexander Zinchenko close in on a new return to the club with just a week to go to Arsenal's next game. Fabio Vieira, Jesus already back in the mix. Could we have four back in the team? This is the Arsenal News Show. Unmuted. Ah, the joys of live broadcasting, eh? The joys of live broadcasting. <laughs> oh, dear. I, I sh I'll probably just leave that bit in in the video. But if you're listening to audio platforms, you won't hear that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably just leave that in. Just muted. It's incredibly bad production value. Oh, well. Oh, well. I was thinking, oh, that was so good. I smashed it. You would never hear it. I absolutely smashed that first one. Um, good morning to those joining us live. Thank you so much for doing so. Damien, Glenn, Jalali, Darren, Rich, Franklin, Lars, uh, Stevie, Brian, Temi, John, uh, Input, Franklin, Josh, John Rocks, Mr. Ree, Amesy, Grantley, Poos, Maximius, Tom, PJ, um, Radival, uh, Kaiser, and Ismail, and plenty more of you guys and girls as well. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. It's very much appreciated. I hope you've had a fantastic week so far. I can imagine loads of you thinking, to my volume turned on? I mean, loads of people looked at like your phones or your devices then thinking, Am I, is, is there something wrong with my phone? Am I turning the volume up? Have I not got the volume on? <laughs> well, yeah, you can actually see that they're on the screen when it's muted. So, oh, dear. It's so frustrating. It's so annoying. Like, I, I, I absolutely smash that start so often and i mess it up because technology and I, I say technology it's my fault i needed to, i should have checked if i was what happens is when you plug a microphone in Streamyard automatically mutes you so you have to unmute yourself when you chuck a new microphone in so ugh, just so frustrating anyway not as frustrating as it is of course to be a manchester united fan or a chelsea fan or even a spurs fan at the moment um of course there's lots to discuss, uh, Premier League action for the weekend is finally finished. We enter a week of FA Cup action that Arsenal, of course, are not involved in. We had our first game of the FA Cup fifth round yesterday in which Coventry battered Maidstone United 5-0. I do feel for Maidstone United. You know, they're a team that are only about 20 minutes from me. Um, and, uh, yeah, you've got to feel they've gone all the way to Ipswich 1 and they get Coventry and then get absolutely destroyed. So, yeah, very frustrating night for them. But other FK, FA Cup fixtures tonight, we've got Bournemouth against Leicester, Blackburn against Newcastle, Luton Town against Manchester City. And then tomorrow we've got Chelsea Leeds, which is important for Arsenal because if Chelsea beat Leeds, it means that Chelsea's game against Arsenal on the 16th of uh, February of, of March sorry, will be rescheduled so make sure you look out for that uh, Nottingham Forest against Manchester United Wolves against Brighton and Liverpool against Southampton it's thick and fast that the games come for so many teams Arsenal have a week off uh, so does Sheffield United by the way who we play on Monday night after the weekend so yeah there's still plenty to um there's still plenty to, to to kind of be rested up on their side of things as well. However, moving to Arsenal and their results, it was a very bad result in the PL2. Um, Arsenal, who have been chasing those top places in the PL2 table, lost to a West Brom side that have won now, this being, I think, just their fourth win of the entire season. They lost 3-0. We saw players Ethan Maneri started, Miles Lewis Skelly started, Amario Koja Dubri started. I think James Hilson uh, was in goal as well. Uh, a lot of players highly rated in the young sides um, starting this game and sadly not getting a result. A very, very disappointing result indeed. Uh, Mehmet Ali, uh, you know, he's, he's done a decent job as Mehmet Ali. And I, there has been question marks about the Arsenal Academy in terms of like not only results, but are we producing players that are good enough? You think you look at the Liverpool situation, you know, the amount of kids that are involved in their squad and came on in the League Cup final. It's created extra emphasis on academy football, especially at Arsenal, how other teams like Chelsea and Manchester City do as well. So Mehmet Ali, is he under pressure? Might be. Might be after that one. Uh, moving into the Premier League and yesterday's only results, which finished off the game week. Uh, Bowen scoring a hat-trick for West Ham United against 
Brentford. Um, that leaves the Premier League table looking very interesting in the top half, actually, because as I mentioned uh, the day before yesterday, um, West Ham would move above Wolves back into eighth place. Uh, they now close within uh, five points of Manchester United. They're joint on 39 points uh, with seventh place Brighton as well. Will Manchester United be at risk if they keep dropping points? They've got Manchester City up next. Meanwhile, Brighton play Fulham and West Ham play Everton. And speaking of Everton, they have been, uh, or rather have seen, their points deduction reduced to just six points. Reduced by four, um, which means that their positioning in the Premier League table has suddenly shot up as well. They've gone up two places um, in the table. Well, actually, well, one. Well, yeah, two places in the table um, into 15th place. It means that Nottingham Forest dropped to 17th. Brentford dropped to 16th in the table and it has certainly put more pressure on the likes of Nottingham Forest and Brentford, who, of course, Brentford losing last night uh, at West Ham. Uh, will they be drawn into this battle? Well, I think they already are. Luton Town on 20 points. Luton are the only side, really, that are in with a shout of staying up. And maybe they'll help be helped even more by the potential for um, further points deductions to Everton and Forest, if indeed they are found to have um, found guilty of breaching further um Profit and sustainability regulations. So there you go. And uh, Matt G says Tony did not particularly look impressive yesterday for Brentford in their defeat to West Ham. Uh, now, Arsenal, according to Football Insider, are continuing to monitor Evan Ferguson, uh, the Brighton striker and Ireland international, of course, who has been playing uh, in the Premier League at the top level for a couple of seasons now. And it's a name that a lot of Arsenal fans have been talking about. Well, he's only got six goals this season in 24 appearances for Brighton. He doesn't necessarily start every single game. In fact, he started, I think, two or three of the last something like eight or nine games in the league for Brighton. Joel Pedro has been fantastic for Brighton this season and has kind of overtaken Ferguson. He's never really been a player that is on my list of you know, potential candidates. I think that there's a lot more development that's needed in Evan Ferguson before uh, we start talking about him in the same circles as some of the other strikers that have been linked. You know, if it was an option between Ivan Tony uh, and Ferguson, well, I think there's more guarantees that Tony's going to get your goals at the moment than Ferguson is as well. And that's coming from me, you know. So I'm not sure that the hundreds of millions of pounds that's been talked about with Evan Ferguson, who's just signed a brand new contract, of course, is necessarily going to be the best investment for the club at this stage of his kind of time. Uh, there are other strikers around that I think would make more sense for Arsenal to go for. But it's said that Arsenal are still monitoring the Irish internationals situation. Of course, we've also seen links to Victor Ozymen in the last couple of days. Again, it's kind of just that, I think, recycling of news, recycling of links. And uh, yeah, I cannot get my head around why Arsenal would be going for Evan Ferguson in the summer at the moment. And our headline story of the day, and certainly a big, big positive boost, uh, a boost Sorry, uh, Simon Collings of the Evening Standard uh, reporting yesterday that Partey and Zinchenko are hoping to be back in the fold for the game against Sheffield United a week yesterday, Monday night next week. Uh, it's a long time. It's a lot of recovery. It's a lot of training that can still happen. And these two can potentially get some of their first minutes since, well, since 2023, I think. I'm not sure we've seen Zinchenko since that injury he suffered um, was it against... Uh, sorry, we have seen him, haven't we? I'm just thinking of the injury he suffered, which meant he was out of the Fulham game. But he did return for a couple of games at the start of the season. And, uh, and of course, he got injured during that half... Well, he was came off at half-time against Liverpool in our 3-1 win, which then saw Jakob Kivior come on. And never really looked back. Kivior has been absolutely fantastic for Arsenal, I think, since coming in. And whilst the jury has been somewhat out on the Polish international, I think he's done his absolute utmost to, to try and change things. But... Zinchenko did start the 5-0 win over Palace. He did start the 2-1 win against Forest. And he started the 3-1 win against Liverpool. It's worth pointing those out. Um, so he's still a good player. I know that he has doubts for a lot of Arsenal fans about his defensive capabilities. And I actually have quite liked Arsenal inverting from the right-hand side with Ben White uh, playing more internally and Kivior City more traditionally in that kind of left-sided uh, defensive role. Um, but there's certainly... Uh, variation. There's certainly options that Arsenal have. Maybe against Porto, we'll be better off having a player like Zinchenko in the team when we've got to try and dominate the ball and suffocate the opposition in that in that half and have something more creative, I guess, from that left-hand side than what we would have if it was Kivior. Partey and Zinchenko give us options and variation and changes that we can make. And that 
is a really, really valuable thing. Uh, what is also a potentially valuable thing for you is getting a signed Bakayo Saka shirt on your wall. Another fantastic prize, courtesy of Football Prizes. It is, I don't think, uh, able to get involved in the uh, the early bird price, and that has now expired. But tickets now, of course, costing three ninety five. You can get your hands on one of those tickets to potentially win a signed and framed Bukayo Saka mount with a built-in LED screen playing some of the youngsters' highlights from his time at the club as well. Not only that, but there are some instant win prizes involved in this competition as well. There is a Ben White signed shirt, an Alexander Zinchenko signed shirt, a Declan Rice signed and framed shirt, Absolutely fantastic, that. A Gabriel Jesus signed shirt as well, as well as plenty of football prizes, site credit. The link to get involved in the new competition is down in the description. Uh, UK only, of course, as always. If you've got a friend that's in the UK that can get you a ticket, maybe that's the way forwards. But best of luck to those that uh, that have already got involved. And uh, I look forward to you letting me know if you were successful in some of the other competitions that have just gone through it's great to hear that some of our listeners do pick up these and uh because i know rival channels are also partnered with fp um so it's great to hear when some of ours win them uh which they they do uh which is great so good luck and uh a brand new prize is now up right let's go to part two and your questions then right after this Okay, right. So I guess we're jumping into the chat box, uh, are we? Um, let's go to Onyx Lens says, I honestly would prefer to sign a wide player like Nico Williams. I think we have enough options at striker for now, especially the way that we play with Jesus Kai and Trossard is good depth. And Nketi is still there as well, of course. And Mika Bireth could be coming back in the summer as well. Uh, he's done very, very well for Sturmgrat so far, but there is an intention from the Austrian side to try and, and keep him. So he's one to, to keep our eyes on. For sure. But I see where you're coming from because I, I've, I've talked about this before. Like the striker market is not actually that kind of crazy right now. It's not, there's not that many obvious candidates that aren't going to cost you huge amounts of money that aren't going to be with somewhat a risk. Like Declan Rice, as I always use, is kind of the, the staple argument for this. He was like a dead cert. Like you paid that money, you knew what you were getting. There's not necessarily that in the same kind of mould as there is and was for Declan Rice. Uh, Daniel says, is there any word yet on Tommy Asu's return date? Also, I read some rumours about Timber having a setback. Any truth in that? Where did you read that, Daniel? I'd be curious to know where you read that about Timber having a setback. Um, as far as I'm aware, I don't think there has been. Um, for those, Maybe it's for those that tried to claim that he would be back in January, February. For the fact, for the just... Look, I, and and look, though, some ITKs out there are very well connected. I get that, right? And some have some really good inside information about the club because they've got, they've got friends who work there and they're friends with people who know players and things like this. So some are really well connected. And that's why they're anonymous. And that's why you never know who they are. And that's why sometimes ITKs can make journalists a little silly, you know, admittedly. And I get that. And I don't get frustrated by it because I know the difference. There is a difference between. ITKs and journalists. Journalists put their names to things, for starters. And uh, your reputation is on the line when you put out a story or when you make a claim, you know. And so whenever I put out what I, whenever I get information about something, you know, you're putting your name to that. Whereas ITKs don't necessarily have that same jeopardy. So can sometimes put things out that they've heard off a whim that maybe they've got from one source that they've had trusted before and it's not necessarily been too accurate. And certainly I think that's been the case with the timber injury return. We have, and I have said for quite some time that I thought March would be the earliest. It was never a guarantee that it would even be March, but March was always seen as the earliest because that was the seven month mark after the injury was suffered. And claims of, of January and I mean, February, January was crazy to even suggest by some to be back in, in full training. He's he's not back in full training. And Arteta said he's going to be doing some things with the team this week. That's not full training, by the way. That's still some way off full training. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where January, February was never realistic. Never, ever, ever. It might be that he could get on, on the grass and doing some ball work and maybe doing some things with, with some of the players, but never in a million years was he ever going to be back 
Um, and I think maybe that um, those ITKs out there that were claiming that January, February is a target are now saying that he's on a setback. I can tell you for the matter of fact that as far as I'm aware, you know, there's been nothing to come out to suggest that. I just think he's he was never meant to be back and now there's a little bit of backtracking going on. Uh, Lars says, have even seen ITKs referring to Fabrizio Romano as a source, even if it's not true, just to get some clicks? It, it's the world we live in, Lars, in the day. There is a world of engagement. There's a world of desperation for for something, whether that's followers, whether that's likes, retweets, that's um, clout is the word, I think, <laughs> I guess you used a lot as well. You know, there's like a, a real desire for that. And um, ITKing is is some way that, that some choose to do it. But there are people that are good. And I always say that Team News and Ticks is, for instance, a very well-connected and a very, what's the best way to put it, measured in their approach to the way in which they run their account um, and will tend to say things that, as, that they are like so sure and that they are usually will be double-checking and, and things and things like that. But uh, but yeah, um, there are others that it's just not like that. And then you get the, the 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 thieves, the thieves out there that just copy and paste what other people have said and steal things without giving any credit. Uh, Nizza Keat says, uh, "Would you rather pay fifty million for Williams uh, or sixty million for Javi Simmons or seventy million for Bowen?" It's a great question, actually, um, because those three are are intriguing. I think I'd go for the Simmons option because I think Simmons offers you cover in a lot of different positions. Bowen. The thing about Bowen is, and I like Bowen a lot. Um, the thing about Bowen is, I'm, I'm again, I have I, something of the. There's something of the Wilfred Zaha, about Jared Bowen, uh, and for me, that's the. I think he stands out for West Ham, uh, and that's not to discredit Bowen, but there's something for me like Zaha stood out for Crystal Palace because he was the guy. And I have a feeling that that Bowen is quite similar. But he's got 14 goals this Premier League season playing in in different positions. And to be fair, he's played at centre forward 18 times this season. And he's played 12 times at right wing. He's a good player. You know, he's 27 years of age. So you're not you're not going to be getting too much too much back in resale value. I think you'd have to pay about 100 million. There is some question marks about consistency. Javi Simmons is the exciting one for me of those three. Nico Williams is also um, an exciting player. Um, but Simmons is the one that gets me off my seat. He's kind of the player that I don't think we necessarily have, like the smaller, nimble, lower center of gravity, great technical ability, can drive, can dribble, can create, can score. He's, he's kind of a He's kind of got the whole package. I don't think PSG would ever let him go considering they're losing Mbappe and there aren't going to be any pressure to sell him. But I think that Simmons would be the one that I'm most excited about, about those three. Uh, Lucas says, hi, Tom. Do you think the comment of the blue billion pound bottle jobs uh, will spur Chelsea on uh, to push all the way just like how Arsenal were labelled bottle jobs last season? Well, this obviously came from Gary Neville during the commentary on Sky Sports of the League Cup final. I don't know. Uh, I, I think the mentality and the the way in which Chelsea's squad is, is very different to the Arsenal. I think Arsenal's mentality is exceptional. And I think that Arteta has instilled something of a never-say-die attitude and a attitude of, if we lose a game, it's, right, we lost. We We own that. We accept that. We learn from that. We move on. We respond. We put it to bed. And Declan Rice spoke after the Porto game uh, and said, like, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's maybe it was a lack of savviness and things like this. And, you know, we are we were talking in the dressing room immediately afterwards, like, we go again. We win the next game. We, we will face them in a few weeks. I actually saw Declan Rice after the, the game against... Um, uh, against... Who did we play at the week? Newcastle. Uh, talking to some people and... I, I did overhear part of the conversation, which was one of his, I assume one of his his friends to saying like Porto and he was like, That's Champions League. Like the Champions League is it's a different beast. And I think they learn from it. I think they will learn from that. Um and they will learn from that experience. And um I look for I really look forward to going to that Porto home game because I'm really looking forward to seeing what we do at the Emirates. I'm looking forward to seeing a team really motivated. I think it's a bit of a wake-up call, the first leg. I don't get the same sense as I did after the sporting game. The sporting game, 
and the Olympiacos game and the Villarreal game. Like those games, I didn't get the same feeling that I get now, if that makes sense. The feelings I got after those games were just of frustration and, you know, like almost like it was for the sporting game in particular. It felt like almost a formality, but there was because of the title race. It felt like the Europa League was a distraction. It felt like the Europa League was just something if we won, great, but it's not necessarily transformative like the league was. And I think that that took, in some ways, made them a little bit different in their mindset towards that game. I don't get that with this. I think that they see this as a huge and monumental moment in our season. Um, that, and they will be going into that Porto game incredibly motivated in a way the Champions League can motivate. I think the crowd is going to be unbelievable that night. I think the Emirates atmosphere is going to be on a different level and I cannot wait to witness that. Um, so yeah, I really, really do look at that. Uh, Johnny says, hi Tom, do you think the way Arsenal have played up to the winter break was about not losing pace at the running? I think Johnny, it was always going to be about maintaining, you know, keeping inside the race, winning games, but at the same time, Arteta was using this period of time similar to what Pep did last season. The first half of the season was about experimentation. It was about figuring things out. It was about integrating Havertz and, and Rice and, and Raya um, and would have been Timber, of course, as well. But it was always also about winning enough games that you stay in the race, beating Manchester City, not losing at Anfield, not losing against Spurs, not losing against any big six sides during that first half of the season, beating Manchester United. And then when the festive period hit, I think all of that experimentation and a lot of the factors that Arteta not being on the sidelines, a lot of those factors all combined and hit us in one game. And we didn't finish our dinner. And even the refereeing went against us with Jesus, who should have absolutely had a penalty. The Havertz handball, of course, ex exceptionally unlucky. So all of those things, um, I think, have contributed to us being now a better team. And we are a much more cohesive group that knows exactly what to do in every game. Uh, Bulgarian Guna says, Morning TC, would you sacrifice a potential winger addition if it means that we finally get that ice cold finisher up top in the summer? If you told me that we would land like a striker that takes things to a new level, of course, because I think that Gabriel Jesus can deputise in wide positions as well. And I think we arguably have a player in Jesus that can do that. So of course I would, um, because I think that a cold finisher... That's, it can't, has to be more than just a cold finisher. Because for me, Eddie Nketiah is a player that I'd describe as if you get the ball to him in those six-yard box areas, you know, he's he's good. He's not world-class, but he's he's very good usually. But it's everything else to do with Eddie Nketiah's game that just doesn't, for me, make me see him fit in this philosophy and system. And I think he would be better suited to a Brighton or a Bournemouth or a, um, a Brentford-type team. And I think that Arsenal, if they can land a cold finisher, but a cold finisher that is also collaborative and can hold the ball up and can play the rougher game. And that's why I like Victor Goya Carez a lot, because I think he's got a lot of the traits that I'd like in an Arsenal striker to take us to that next level. But there's also something about the idea of signing like that target man, that bigger striker. I think Kai Havertz has already got so many of those traits and characteristics that we don't need to go out and spend huge money on a target man. We need to go out and sign the perfect centre forward. But there's something about if we can't find that in the summer, we shouldn't spend for the sake of spending. We shouldn't just go and get anyone because we needed someone. I think, as you as was pointed out earlier on in the chat, I'd rather then go for a wide player than rushing and getting the wrong centre forward. I like Isaac Mike. Again, I don't know if Newcastle are going to be open to selling, um, but I, I do like Isaac. I think he's a, a very, very good player and certainly someone that has the potential to maybe be a success at an elite side like Arsenal. Um, that That is, for me, something that, that is really crucial, is that when we go for the striker, it has to be the Declan Rice of strikers. And we need to make sure we get it right. Amira says, other than their age, what's the difference between Eddie and, and Evan Ferguson? Uh, is his age worth the extra money? Are fans overhyping Ferguson's potential? And is the hype influenced by the fact that he's at Brighton? I mean... He scored six Premier League goals this season, has Evan Ferguson. I think he got a hat-trick this season. Am I right in saying that? I'm, I'm pretty sure Evan Ferguson got a hat-trick this season, um, which obviously also um, Eddie Nketiah got a hat-trick this season against Sheffield United. And Eddie Nketiah has five goals in 
24 games this season. And Evan Ferguson, people aren't going to like this discussion. Uh, without a doubt, I don't think they're going to like it. But let me just quickly check if that was a hat-trick. Yeah, he did. He got a hat-trick against Newcastle, which obviously are a much better team, of course. Um, but he scored against Luton this season. He scored against Fulham. He scored against Nottingham Forest. And he got a hat-trick against Newcastle. And he has played 24 games. They've both played 24 games. And Eddie has nine goal contributions. Ferguson has seven. Now, Nketiah has also played less minutes. Eddie Nketiah, 1,044 minutes. Five goals, four assists. Evan Ferguson, 1,207 minutes, one uh, one assist, six goals. That's interesting. You can't say it's not. And I know that people are going to turn around and say, Eddie's playing for Arsenal, Ferguson's playing for Brighton. But, you know, uh, it, it's, it's very, very interesting to suggest that because... Eddie Nketiah, 1,044 minutes. He's played less minutes than Ferguson has played. And so we can talk about Ferguson's starting games. We can talk about Eddie's starting games or whatever. But it's actually, I think, very similar. In fact, let's have a look at how many times they were subbed on this season. That might give us a little bit of a an extra bit of detail, won't it, into, into the kind of the background of this. So Eddie has come on 14 times and been taking off seven. So 10 starts this season. Ferguson has been taken off 11 times, so he's had 13 starts this season. Um, it's interesting, that. That's very, very, very interesting. So Ferguson has started more Premier League games than Eddie has this year. He's played more minutes than Eddie has this year, and he has less goal contributions. One more goal, three less assists, I think. Is it three less? Yeah, three less assists than Eddie and Ketia. You can't say that's not really intriguing, isn't it? It's really, really interesting to look at that. Um, Amira says, Eddie's only a few years older. If he's worth 30 million and Ferguson is 70 million, is that the difference? The potential, 40 million pounds. Yeah, I think it is, Amira. I think you're spot on. Uh, the 40 million difference is is the potential that you get from, uh, from Ferguson. Um, Marks has given the injuries at Liverpool like Zoboslai, Allison, Thiago, Jota, Trent, Endo, Graven, Birch, and Jones, and their fixture list means that they're more likely to drop points than City. Yeah, without a doubt, which is why I want Liverpool to beat City when they face each other, because I think that Liverpool are far more likely to drop points later on down the line than City are. But you could argue, you could argue that we'd rather City won that game and then we beat City, because then we've got it in our hands. If, if City beat Liverpool and then we beat City and win the rest of the games, which obviously is another thing. But if those two results happen, it's in Arsenal's hands. Liverpool, If, Matt, if Liverpool beat City and we beat um, City, uh, the title is in our hands, actually. So you could argue that way around, but I think realistically Liverpool are more like drop points. So I think I'd rather Liverpool won the game. I'd rather it was a draw, obviously, and they both drop points. And if they do draw that game, um, it will mean that Arsenal, if they win against Sheffield United and Brentford, will be top after they beat Brentford. So very, very interesting. Very interesting indeed, the, the next couple of weeks in the title race. And of course, at the end of March, we then play Manchester City. And that game, that is something very, very intriguing indeed. Um, let's go to... Uh, Drago says, uh, we all keep doubting Liverpool, but we are the only side that managed to beat them in the league, not counting what Spurs did. Yeah, and it's true. They, when they have got players fit, even when they don't got, have players fit, they are a motivated team. They will fight to the death. And we saw that in the game against Chelsea in the League Cup as well. That mentality they've got under Klopp is, is something special. And they've got that motivation of what Klopp has given for this season with them leaving. And he did absolutely the right thing by announcing he's leaving during the season. That, I think, was the right choice to do. Uh, Elliot says, Tom, the problem is there is no Declan Rice of strikers in sight of the next five years. With the available strikers we have now, need to take the best on offer and pivot when better is available. I absolutely agree with you, mate. Uh, Mark says, to be fair, Eddie comes into a game frequently with between five to 15 minutes in the game. It is much harder to get into a game and score a goal when you don't start the match. You're absolutely right. Uh, Khan says, Eddie is five to six years older. Evans, Evan is, Evans is 20 in October, so he's very young. I get that, Khan. I absolutely get the difference in the ages, right? But if we're talking about Evan Ferguson as somebody that we say that Arsenal should be going for in the future and that we've... The people are saying that Ferguson's got to be that guy. 
I'm sorry, but he has to be delivering more goals even at the age of 20 than than Eddie Nketiah is at 24, does he not? Surely he does. Um, let's go to uh, Abzul says, Victor, Go Victor Goyokarez is going to solve our striker problem. Jacob says Goyokarez as well. Again, he, he's my pick. He's the one that I'd go for at the moment if I was to choose any striker on the market. It would be him. Uh, Rich says, what about Watkins? 14 goals and 20 assists. Yeah, look, Watkins... I said last year when the whole Tony thing was coming up, I said Watkins is better than Tony. If you want one of those two, you want Watkins. Watkins is the better player. And I think on a, I used to think they were in the same kind of bracket. I think this season, because it's another season of Watkins being just that much better, Watkins is better than Tony. Uh, Watkins is in a higher bracket of strikers for me than Tony is. Watkins has done it season on season on season for Villa and previously for Brentford. Whereas Tony, for me, has done it in one really good season. And I say really good. It was one very decent season. And the season before that was all right. And the season now is proven to be pretty good since he's come back. I think it's, what, four in six or four in seven, something like that. Um, and Watkins is an Arsenal fan as well, says Radit. Yeah, but Watkins is better than Tony. If you had to drop 100 million on Watkins or Tony, it's Watkins all day long. It's not even a debate. It's just not. It's just not a debate. Um, Watkins is, is better than, than Tony. Um, much, much better. And he fits, I think he fits the mold of an Arsenal striker as well. Um, Uzu, Uzu says, Tom, which players would you sell come the summer? I think we've got a lot on the list. You know, Ramsdale and Ketia, um, Nelson, I think Smith Rowe or Vieira, one of those two is is probably there as well as potentially players that could go. Uh, Cedric's leaving, El Nenny's leaving. There's question marks over Partey. I think I'd probably sell Partey and look to replace him. Um, because I can't rely on his injury record. It's it's too it's too chaotic. Um, anyone else? I think that's about it. There might be some I'm forgetting, um, but I think that's that's probably about it. Um, yeah. So there you go. They're, they're the the ones that I'd go for. There you go. Uh, e five says Xerxes is more of a wide forward than an out and out forward. He does seem that way, doesn't he? He does seem like someone who drifts a little bit Jesusy, but in some ways. That maybe is what we need at Arsenal, is that type of centre-forward. So Xerxes is an intriguing one. I'd prefer him to Ferguson right now, to be honest, Xerxes. He he's, he's impressed me. He's not convinced me, but he's impressed me. Um, so he's, in, he's on the radar. Uh, Bizarre says, realistically, do you think we will sell Partey, or even if we do, um, get a decent amount, knowing that we struggle to sell people with great value? And would you rather sell Fabio or Smith-Rowe? Um, I think realistically there is a chance to sell Partey whilst the Saudi situation is as it is. I think there is obviously always scope that one of those teams could come in. There's been Serie A interest in Partey as well. They're always but maybe an out. And if you can get 15 to 20 million pounds for Partey, great. I doubt it. But if you can get 15 to 20 million, then great. It'd be a really good bit of uh, money getting back in the in the car. I mean, we've got 21 and a half million for Xhaka. Why can't we get 15 to 20 million for, uh, for Partey? I know that Xhaka's been top for buyer, uh, but... Uh, yeah, there's something to be said about that. Um, I think that in between Fabio and Smith Rowe, it's tough. It's tougher than I thought, this question. In fact, for the last five minutes of the show, I think I know the answer to this, but I am going to put a poll in the chat box. Um, who would you rather sell? Who would you rather? And, and consider these factors, right? I think Smith Rowe would get you a lot more money. Um, Vieira, we haven't necessarily seen as much from, and I know he's just come back from injury, um, but I think he's got a better record, maybe injury wise, than than Smith Rowe does. And I think actually that Vieira slightly fits what we do more than Smith Rowe. He was signed by Arteta, whereas Smith Rowe obviously was inherited by Arteta. Um, it's a real tough one, this. It's actually a really tough question. So who would you rather sell? That's the question. Smith Rowe or Vieira? Get your question, get your answer into that poll. If you're listening on catch up, leave a comment down below and your reasoning as to why as well. I'm really intrigued by that. It's a really good question. Um, because my heart, and I agree, Daniel says, my heart says sell Fabio. My head says sell Smith Rowe, given the extra money. Only thing to consider, though, is the homegrown quota. I think we'll be fine homegrown-wise. I don't think that's going to be a problem for us. 
Oh, Tierney's a great shout in terms of someone that we got to sell in the summer. Yeah, Tierney as well. Players going back from injury. Um, uh, Nuno Tavares. Laconga, I'm not actually sure that we should sell him. Um, Laconga is an interesting one. That said, if we get a very good bid for him, that's when I think you probably should be looking to sell Laconga. If you get like more than 20 million quid coming in for Laconga, that's when you should probably be looking to sell him. Because is his value going to be any higher than that? I don't think so. So that's certainly one to look at. But if we don't get those offers, I really wouldn't mind seeing him given a chance uh, back at the club again. Because he's been fantastic this season for, for Luton. Um, yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Really, really tough. Uh, let's have a quick check on the poll. Uh, we've nearly got 100 votes on it already. It's slightly leaning more towards Vieira. It's about 60-40 in favour of selling Vieira at the moment, which is actually is, is less than I thought. And while we're getting some more votes on that, uh, Martin Corker, thank you so much for becoming a brand new part of the TGT family. Welcome. And uh, I hope you enjoy yourself uh, in the sphere. If you would like to also become a member and help support the channel, and if you want to join our Discord server, which you can do by becoming an expert member or a TGT ambassador, um, you can you can do that. Aditya says, Tom, are you in favour of keeping both? That is the obvious other option. I probably should have included that in the poll, I guess, and maybe sell both because um, I can see some people saying that. I don't think so. I think we have to choose. I think we have to choose, mate, between the two. I don't think we have room for both. I really don't know if we have room for both in the squad anymore. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a difficult day. I think Smith. I think Villa will come in for Smith Rowe, and he will probably play really well and score a lot of goals. And I think that Newcastle could come in for Smith Rowe. You know, Live says Smith Rowe isn't the profile, and there's an injury concern there. And I absolutely get that. I really do. Uh, Magambo says I would sell Smith Rowe because Arteta seems to find him surplus since Martinelli locked that left wing and position in the Odegaard in the centre mid position. It's better for his career and should have read the room last season itself as well, maybe. Uh, Aim says Tavares has got injured and is out for a while, which may affect moving. Yeah, it's very true. Um, Nuno Tavares did actually suffer an injury uh, for Forrest and uh, it would have been great if we were. <laughs> it would have been great if we uh, would have seen him move on in January as well. Very frustrating. And it looks like he's now it looks like he's now going to be out for a little while, which is very, very frustrating indeed. Uh very frustrating. Yeah. Four weeks apparently, to be fair. Um that's what Jay Percy of the uh Telegraph supposedly says. Um <laughs> it's interesting. I see Forest fans saying, Never thought I'd miss Nuno Tavares. Please come back soon. Um, there you go. <laughs> So, yeah, he's going to be out for a little bit, it seems. Right, we'll finish the show with a quick just update on that poll. 61% of you, 62, uh, say Vieira. 39, 38% of you say Smith Rowe. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I think it's a really intriguing question. Um, but thank you for listening. Do drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, there may be a show this afternoon. There may not. I need to decide if uh, if we're going to have a guest on this evening. I'll keep you updated. Keep following us on Twitter at the Guna Talk TV. I'll be updating you over there as to whether or not we do one. But thank you for all the support. Do drop a like on the video. I don't think I even pressed, I don't even even hyped up the like thing today. We could be in trouble. So if you haven't pressed a like on the video, I don't think I've said 1K every day yet. That's scary. Oh no. I was so I was so whipped up in the craziness of the muting this morning that I think I uh, I think I forgot to remind people. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not good. Well, there's a thousand of you watching now. So if every single one of you dropped a like on the video, we would hit our challenge target. So please, please, please do. And uh, and yeah, tell your friends. <laughs> Thank you all. Have a fantastic Tuesday. And as always, stay safe, stay well, and respectful and happy. And up the Arsenal.